to the negative three halves. Here we go. <laughs> Step one. Flip. Flip it. <laughs> so 16 ninths to the three halves. <laughs> what does a fractional exponent mean? Square root. Now, I said square root. It isn't always a square root. It's always a radical. This number tells you that it's a square root. If that had been a three, it would be a cube root, right? But it's a two, so it's a square root. And then we have to cube it. So what's the square root of 16 ninths? I feel like I just did this problem. The square root of 16 ninths is four thirds. And four thirds cubed is sixty-four twenty-seven. There it is. All right, four fifths to the negative second. You got kind of the same thing happening, right? It's a negative, so you're going to flip that and make it five fourths. But it is squared. Is there a radical or anything like that? No, we're just squaring it. So the answer would be 25 sixteenths. Five squared and four squared. Right? Next. Have they made it around? Thank you. Oh, and it's my rank our wrestlers. We have two in this class, right, Keith? Congrats. Hi, Good job. And Garrett. Garrett. And Garrett, congrats. Hey, Come on. Hey, All right, so here we go. Now we got to simplify this. So this is a matter of personal choice. So as you look at the problem, Lauren Woods, what do you want to do first? wants to work inside. So if we do that, we got a three and a two that nothing happens with those. Now what about the X's here? Be careful. What happens? These come up, right? <coughs> they come up and put four more on top. So now we have X to the ninth. Now these guys are a little more complicated because they're both moving. So you're gonna have two of them on the top and four of them on the bottom. Which means when you cancel, you will have two left over on the bottom. Right? And then we still gotta cube it. Don't forget that part. We still have to do that. So three cubed. Now, what do I do with these exponents like this? Multiply them. Two cubed. There we go. Everybody got it? 
next problem? What's happening in this one? Yeah, there's no flipping going on in this problem because there's no negative exponent, right? So all we're doing is square rooting 49 fourths. It's 7 over 2. So it's 7 over 2 and you're done. Kids, some of the problems don't have 12 steps. 58 x to the negative 7th is going to be 58 over x to the seventh. And if you miss that, I'm going to publicly humiliate you. Do not miss this problem. Yeah. We got to stop missing this. This is easy. Okay, now we've got kind of tricky here. Yeah, it's kind of tricky because there's not a lot of numbers in a row for that first one. Alright, so we got to figure out what goes in all of these blanks. So you, you don't have a lot to go on. So what are some thoughts you have when you see, okay, I'm going from negative 2 to negative 1. Mikey, <coughs> Mikey says one option is I'm adding 1. Well, if I add 1, this one will be 0. That one will be one. This is two, three, four, and five. Oh. So whatever idea we had, in this case he got it right on target first try, whatever idea we had, we had to make sure that it carried on throughout the whole sequence. It, uh, geometric? No. no. Who said that? Why did you say that? Exactly. It can be geometric. Mabuna says I have to be multiplying by the same number. I am not. I am adding, but I'm not multiplying. All right. Next. What's happening here? You've got a bunch of numbers in the round. You're timesing by three. So I don't know. These are getting really big. <laughs> now, what about this one? Divide by three. So it's going to be five thirds. That's exactly right. Is that one geometric? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because we multiply by three all the way down the line. All right, now we've got a simple little exponential here. What is the horizontal asymptote? Y equals three. Y equals three. That's correct. Remember, the horizontal asymptote of any exponential is zero. When you stick a plus three on the end, you lift that up three. So now that horizontal asymptote is three. What is the y-intercept? Zero, four. Zero comma four, four. Why is it zero comma four? If you plug in zero, this gives you one plus three. Increasing or decreasing? Increasing. How do I know? Because the number hooked to the x is bigger than 1. And if it's bigger than 1, you are increasing. No. Something to the 0 power is 1. 0 to the 0 is undefined. But anything else to the 0 power is 1. Find the common ratio. That's easy. What's the common ratio? Three. Three. That's what we're getting. That's how we're getting from term to term. Multiplying by three. 
find a sub 10, which is just the math way of writing the 10th term. What is the 10th term? Well, it would be 2 times 3 to the 9th. 3966, you say? Alright, I'm taking Mamuna's word for it. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And then you want to find the sum of eight terms. You got a formula for it. So that's going to be the first term minus the first term times the ratio to the eight over one minus the ratio. What, as so often happens, you want to take care of that denominator, and then we can type in our numerator and divide it by negative 2. So 2 minus 2 times 3 to the 8 divided by negative 2. I got 6560 yeah. as my final answer. log 7 equals x. So I just want to know what that equals. 3 plus log 7. So what am I going to do? I'm going to type it in. I'm going to type 3 plus log 7. And whatever it says is going to be my answer. So it looks like the answer is 3.8451. Yes. This is the section as you round into the 10,000. What about this one? The only way to get x unhooked from that logarithm is the second log. Yep. So if I second log 1.9, I get 79.4328. Yes, And then be really careful on this one, kids. Because sometimes we get so excited about second logging that we forget what? You gotta divide by four. Yep. You're gonna get the wrong answer if you don't. You make me feel like I've said these things before. Second log, <coughs> 1.825. Sixty-six point eight three point eight three four four. Yep. All right. Like that all seems pretty easy and straightforward. Now we got our word problems, which are also easy and straightforward if you read them. So here we go. I'm going to borrow eleven thousand dollars to buy a car. I'm going to be charged 6% interest. How much will the monthly payments be for me to pay off the loan? PB. PB. It couldn't be, I mean, this has every possible word in it. This is a PB. So here we go. I'm going to borrow $11,000. So where does that go? That is B. So $11,000. Aren't I looking for my payment again? So one minus. What's my little r? 0 0.06. 0 0.06. And I'm going to divide it by what? What's my n in this problem? 12. How do I know? 
So take a look, make sure all you got all the right numbers in the right spots. Let's figure out what that denominator is. So 0.06 divided by 12, yep, 0.005. Now I'm going to go ahead and type in my numerator. And as long as I type it in exactly the way I wrote it, all is good. If you want to break it up and do it in steps, that's fine. But you can type that in exactly the way you wrote it. When you get your whole numerator figured out, tell me what you got for the whole numerator. 0.25. You got it, Becky. 0.25. Now. What do you need to do with that whole numerator? Now that you've got it, you need to divide it by 0 0.005. By 0 .005. So now I have my bracket value, which is 51. So now what do I need to do? Take 11,000 divided by that bracket. So 11,000 divided by either type the number back in or hit the second answer and the payments are going to be two hundred and twelve dollars and sixty six cents starting point, the beginning of time, x is 0, 3.5 inches. What is the length after 7 days? 3.5 <coughs> times 2.1 to the 7th. x is the number of days, and I'm waiting 7 days. So my line is going to be quite long. Six hundred and thirty point three eight inches. When will the plant be three feet long? Whoa, Miss Ford got tricky. I got this. I don't put three in for why. I put 36 in for Y. Why do I have to put 36 in for Y? Because Y is in inches. It doesn't say when is it 3 inches long. It says when is it 3 feet long. So I got to put 36 in there. Oh my gosh, Mrs. Ford, that is incredibly tricky. Yes, it is. 
Now what? I'm going to divide. That won't be nice. 36 divided by 3.5. So I got 10.28, a whole bunch of stuff. It's a big old decimal. You don't need to write it down, but if you're more comfortable writing it down, that's what you need to do. Write down the whole thing. Now I need to log both sides because <coughs> of the exponent. Right? What's the matter, Kennedy? Like when that X is there, do you just like not type that in? Yeah. You have to log it in. Yeah, no, you can't type it in. Okay, you gotta you gotta log it with the X down. Okay. So we're gonna log both sides. And we know immediately that that X now is going to come down into a more manageable spot. So that I can now <coughs> divide in order to get my X by itself, which is what I wanted to do. So. The last thing I typed in on my calculator was this division here. So this number is still on my calculator. So I'm just going to do, I'm either going to do log, type in the whole number again, or I'm going to do log, second answer. Either way, you got to close those parentheses, baby. You are right. Divided by log 2.1. And this thing will be three feet long and 3.14 days. Okay. Mr. Fogel deposits $1,919 in an account paying 4.4% interest compounded quarterly. Exactly. I don't even mind that you guys act bored. That means you know what you're doing. Hopefully all these tests are going to be good. If we all get A's, we have A's. We'll have a little something if we all get A's. We'll have something. Now, listen. Listen, we know, we know this is the A formula because we are not making payments, are we? No. Nope. It's a one-time deposit Mr. Fogel is making, and he wants to know how much he will have after 17 years. So 0.044 compounded quarterly to the 17 times 4, 68th power. Do I need logarithms or anything tricky? No. Oh, just type it in. 1919 1 plus 1044 divided by 4 to the 68. And he's going to have $4,037.88. When will he have four times as much? Yeah. So 1919 times four, that's 76, 76. Mm -hmm. I don't know, is it? Yeah. So 1919, one plus, everything stays the same. The only thing I don't know is that T. What do I need to do? Divide by the 1919, and of course that's just going to give me four over here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that too. What's one plus 0.044 divided by four? 
one plus 1.011 to the 14th. I don't have to do that, but I just went ahead and worked this part out so I had a number there instead of all that mess. Now what happens? Now I need to walk. Kids, you can't solve it when T's up there. Yep, you gotta get it down, and the only way to do that is to take the logarithm. Now, I've done so many of these that I kind of did two steps and one. What do I know is going to happen when I take the logarithm? The 4T is going to come out in front, right? So I went ahead and did that. Is that bothering you? Okay. Everybody followed that? All right, so now what do I do? So now I'm going to divide both sides by the log of 1.011. Right, thank you. Log 4 divided by log 1.011. Now, this one has an extra step though because what do I have over here? After I do that division, I still have to divide it by 4. So your answer, it'll be quadrupled in 31.68 years. 31.68. Mrs. Coors collected five pencils on the first day, 1545. How many pencils will she collect on the 10th day of school? What are we looking for? We're looking for the 10th term in the list, aren't we? Yeah. And we know the 10th term in the list is the first term times the ratio to the 9th. Okay, she's got a lot of pencils. 98,415 pencils. <coughs> many problems, I think that means pencils, how many pencils will she have collected all together after eight days of school? So now we're going to sum, and we're going to sum eight, right? Not ten, that was the last problem, we're doing eight now. So the formula says take the first term minus the first term, ratio to the eight, one minus ratio. Shiloh, what am I going to say? Do the denominator? Yeah. Yep, do the denominator. Numerator, negative 32,000. Now, you don't, certainly you want to type in the numerator, but you don't really need to write it down. What you really need to do is divide it by negative, negative 2, and then your answer will be 16,400. Pencils or problems, depending on whatever version we're taking. Okay? Dr. Greer would love to have $750,000. I missed Dr. Greer, that's why I put him in the problem. $750,000 in eight years. How much will he need to deposit right now in order to reach his goal if the bank will pay 4.8% interest compounded monthly? This is the A formula. Very good, Ashley. This is the A formula. Is Dr. Greer making payments? No. We want to know how much does he have to give the bank right now so that he'll end up with $750,000. And the interest rate is 0.048. It is compounded monthly, so N is 12, because N is the number of times a year you're doing it. And he wants this in eight years, so 
his exponent will be 96. Is everybody good with the setup? Yes. Now, can we type this in right here, that circle thing? Yes. Yeah. Let's do that. Parentheses, 1 plus 0.048 divided by 12, close parentheses, to the 96. Did you get 1.46? I've got to type it in exactly the way I wrote it and put it in the parentheses. Now, I now have this value, right? I need to know what this is, so what do I need to do? Divide 750,000 by this number that you're either going to type back in or get divided by second answer. Oh no, poor Dr. Greer. He would have to deposit 511,240 dollars and one cent. He probably doesn't have that much. time people will need to turn theirs in but I will be looking at the note cards because what is on what do you get to have written on the card that's your formula the formulas you don't have other stuff written on there this isn't a cheat sheet this is a formula card right so I'll be checking it out one more thing I, we didn't have time before but the question came up Mrs. Ford why is something to the zero power equal to one? That's kind of counterintuitive, but not really. I want you to stop and think. What happens when you divide something by itself? You get one. Well, what does the rule of exponents tell me to do in a division problem? Do I subtract these exponents? So if I subtract them, I get x to the zero. That's why anything to the zero power is one. It comes straight from your properties of exponents. All right.